Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 32 of the chapter Hello Elkanes and Hello Arenes. In this video, I am going to do two in-text questions that is question 10.8 and question 10.9. Let us come straight to the questions. Which compound undergoes faster SN1 reaction or SN1 reaction faster? As I told you in the previous video, for SN2 reaction, in SN2 reaction, the two reactants, they participate at the same time and that is why it is known as SN2 reaction. But SN2 reaction takes place in one step. On the other hand, SN1 reaction, that is nucleophilic substitution reaction, one, in SN1 mechanism, the reaction takes place in two steps. And in each step, one of the reactants is undergoing the change. So in the first step first, the carbocation is formed. And in the second step to the carbocation, the nucleophile attaches itself. So there, are, there was one factor which was important or which decided whether SN2 mechanism would take place. And that was steric hindrance. That if the, uh, the attached groups around the alpha carbon are bulky, then or the nucleophile is a bulky nucleophile then SN2 mechanism becomes very very difficult because all the parts or all those bulky groups have to react together and if you have two fat ladies like me together adjusting them is difficult but if one is thinner and one is fat like me the adjustment is slightly easier so it is somewhat like that when the groups are bulkier the more the steric hindrance the more difficult for SN2 mechanism to take place because you need those bulky groups to be together at the same time and yet the atoms that have to join it becomes if there's there are bulky groups for these two atoms to join together they can't come close enough because of steric hindrance right these other groups are going to not let this come close enough so Steric hindrance was the important factor that decided whether SN2 mechanism will take place or not. In the case of SN1 mechanism, which takes place in two steps, what happens? Steric hindrance, of course, is important because any reaction which undergoes nucleophilic substitution, which did not undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction 2, would undergo nucleophilic substitution by the mechanism 1. That is, where one step takes place at a time. In the first step, carbocation will be formed and in the second step, the nucleophile will attach itself to the positively charged carbocation. So, steric hindrance is of course one factor. The second factor which decides the speed of new SN1 mechanism would be the stability of the carbocation formed. So, in this first step, when the carbocation is formed, the more easy it is for the reactant to form the carbocation, the, and the more stable the carbocation is, the more are the chances or the speed of the SN1 reaction. So, the two factors are stability of carbocation and steric hindrance. When you are, you have to keep these in mind when you are deciding which one would undergo SN1 faster. As far as carbocation is concerned, 3 degree carbocation is more stable than 2 degree which is more stable than 1 degree. That is a tertiary carbocation is more stable than a secondary carbocation and a primary carbocation. So if the carbon which is attached, the alpha carbon is tertiary, secondary or primary, the carbocation is formed by the loss of the halogen. So when the halogen moves out, you will have the positive charge there. So if that carbon is tertiary, it's a tertiary carbocation. If it's secondary, it's a secondary carbocation. And if it is primary, it's a primary carbocation. So now we can tell when the chlorine here leaves, the carbocation that will be formed would be a tertiary carbocation. Do you see here? This carbon is attached to three other carbons. Therefore, this would be a tertiary carbocation that would be formed in the first step. And here, this carbon is attached to two other carbons. Therefore, when chlorine leaves, this carbon would be a secondary carbocation. So which would be more stable? A tertiary carbocation would be more stable. Therefore, this would undergo SN1 reaction faster. Second example, here again you have chlorine here, which is again a secondary carbocation would be formed because this carbon is attached to two other carbons. And here, the chlorine is terminal, which means this carbon, the alpha carbon, is attached to only one other carbon. So it's a primary carbocation. 
again on the basis of the carbocation formed you can tell that the reaction the SN1 mechanism of this one will be faster. So this was which compound undergoes SN1 reaction faster. The next question is with question 10.9. There are certain reactions given to you and you have to identify the products or the alkyl group. So that is you have to identify A, B, C, D and E and you have to identify R and R dash which are alkyl groups. So I have circled these by pink. What is expected of us? Now, you know, when alkyl halides, when they react with magnesium in the presence of dry ether, what do you get? You get Grignard reagent. So this is a cyclohexane. And so this is bromocyclohexane, right? And when it reacts with magnesium, it will result in the formation of a Grignard reagent. And what is Grignard reagent? Grignard reagent is nothing but the halogen and the carbon. They move apart and the magnesium comes in between them. So let us write this first one here. I'll make it this way. I always find it easier to do it this way. This is Br plus Mg, okay? This will produce, in the presence of dry ether, would give you A. So A should be, again, the same cyclohexane. And in place of Br, you first get Mg here and then Br. That is Grignard reagent. And this is compound A. So A is found. And when you make this react with water, what do you get? You get B. So what would B be? Whenever you carry out the hydrolysis of this, the MgOH Br gets separated and you get the cyclohexane back. The Mg combines from water HOH. The OH forms MgOH Br and the hydrogen attaches itself here where magnesium leaves in order to give you back the cyclohexane, right? So you will get MgOHBr and the cyclohexane would be regenerated. So what is this? This is B. So we have identified A, we have identified B. Come to the next reaction now. You have RBr. R is an alkyl group. But in order to know what the alkyl group is, the hint will be given to us somewhere in the reaction. So right now we do not know what R is, but RBr combines with magnesium to give C. We know aryl halides do not combine with magnesium to give Grignard reagent. It is only alkyl halides which do. So R here should be an alkyl group and R as it is usually represents an alkyl group. In the presence of dry ether, it should give Grignard reagent, which on reaction with deuterium oxide, deuterium oxide is nothing but water, but heavy water, where the isotope of hydrogen is not hydrogen, it is deuterium. So the reaction is the same, only instead of H, we will be writing D. The reaction would still be the same. So let us write the same reaction. It is nothing but here, like in this case, R was cyclohexane. Here we need to know what R is. So RBr combines with magnesium in the presence of dry ether to give you C. And how would we know C? Which on reaction with D2O gives you CH3, CH, CH3. So let me write this third product first. It gives us CH3, CH, D, CH3. Now, when reaction takes place with water, with D2O, what would have happened? D2O is nothing but DOD, right? The OD would combine with Mg, would combine with Mg and Br to form MgOHBr, ODBr. And this D is the one which has come and replaced the, high, the, um, the o, MgBr here. It means that in place of this deuterium, the MgBr was present. So we are moving in the reverse direction. What, how would you have, what would have been here in place of D? The other product here, if we got it from Grignard region, should be Mg O D B R. So what should have been before this? Before this, we should have had CH3, CH, 
CH3 and in place of D I would have had MGBR. This would have been the Grignard reagent. If this was Grignard reagent, how did I obtain Grignard reagent? I obtained Grignard reagent from an alkyl halide which I reacted with magnesium and in place of where bromine was attached, we get between carbon and the carbon and the bromine, the magnesium attaches itself. It means this was the carbon to which magnesium has attached itself. So this was the carbon where bromine was attached. So this was 2-bromopropane should have been the original compound. So what is R then? R is CH3, CH, CH3. So R would be, C, and how would R be attached to the bromine? R would be CH3, CH, CH3, and here you would have Br. You could write it this way too. Usually we write it, uh, we do not write it this way, but let me write it how we would have in the same way. This would be CH3, CH, CH3, and the Br was here. So this should have been the original compound and R would be CH3, R is CH3, CH, CH3. So this is R, the alkyl group. Then comes the secondary butyl group as we would call it uh, in common language. So, so we now know what D is, uh, no, we now know what C is, yeah, we now know what C is, this is C, and we know what R is. So these are the things that we have found out yet. So we now know what C is and we now know what R is. So we now come to the last equation. Now for the third equation, let us write down what this compound is. You have CH3. CH3, 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 and a CH3 here. In the presence of sodium and ether, this compound has been formed. This is the product. It has been, do you see the arrowhead going this way? You have, R, it has been formed from R dash X. And whatever this compound uh, that is the haloalkane is, it combines with magnesium to give you the Grignard reagent which on combination with water will give you E. So we already know this part of the question we've already been doing in the other examples. So let us understand what this is. When you an alkyl halide reacts in the presence of sodium and ether what reaction is this? It is the Wurtz reaction. W R T U R T Z. Wurtz reaction is taking place. And what happens in this? The halogen leaves and results in the formation of the sodium halide. And two alkyl groups, that is the R dash, would combine with R dash to give you a dimer. Uh, or uh, an alkane with double the number of carbon atoms. So it's like having, so what would R dash have been? If you look at this molecule and you divide it equally into two molecules, this is what you would have had. This would be one R dash and this would be the other R dash. The two joined together in Wurtz reaction to give you a larger molecule. So what do you understand from this? You, this this part of the equation has been given to you as a hint to identify the R dash. So from this we know what R dash would have been. This is automatically you understand since it reacted with sodium and ether it is undergoing the Wurtz reaction and therefore R dash should be CH3 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 and this obviously would also be a carbon here CH and the halogen is attached to this carbon. Now when this undergoes reaction with magnesium in the presence of dry ether, what would be formed? The, uh, what Grignard reagent would be formed. So let's make the Grignard reagent here. CH3, CH3, CH3 and here you would get B MGBR or Mg. M 
x since they've written x so we write x here and so this is d the compound d and when this you make it react with water again water is hoh the oh would result in the formation of mg oh x plus what is the other product that you would get the other product would be e it would be ch3 and you'd get the hydrogen here h here and ch3 ch3 in other words if you just ignore when you're writing down this molecule what are you getting ch3 ch ch3 and ch3 this is 2 methyl propane is your compound right this is what you would get and this is e this is compound e so what have we identified we've identified e we've identified d and we've identified r dash so with that we finish question 10.8 and 10.9 and i'd like to wind up this video right here if you found it helpful give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now